Okay, I think we can probably get things kicked off here. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's Log Rocket webinar. Today we are talking about getting started with mobile app analytics. Really exciting topic. So my name is John Levis. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at Log Rocket, and really excited today to be joined by Matt Arbersfeld, who is Log Rocket CEO. Yeah, good to good to see everyone. Um, I'm also our head of product and. Um, before Log Rocket, I, I worked on a lot of mobile apps. So this is a topic near and dear to my heart. So excited, excited for, for today. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Yeah, so let's jump right into it. Um, what are we going to be talking about today? So one, why mobile analytics matters. Then we're going to talk about, you know, what are some things you can track if you're just getting started with mobile analytics? Uh, obviously, this is a Log Rocket webinar. So we're going to be talking about how you can get started doing those things using Log Rocket. Uh, and then we will wrap up with a Q&A. So if you have questions that pop up during the webinar, um, please use the Q&A functionality to drop in any questions. And then we'll we'll spend a few minutes uh, chatting about those at the end. Um, and then last thing, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we are recording this. So you know, no need to take notes. We will send out the recording to everyone uh, afterwards. Uh, and you can review anything and, and get caught up on anything that you might have missed then. So let's get into it here. Why does mobile analytics matter? Well, uh, the long and the short of it is that mobile has been growing like crazy for the past, you know, probably 10 or so years now, really since kind of the iPhone was released way back in, in 2007. And, um, you know, the statistics I think here really speak for themselves. You know, Americans on the whole spend now more time on mobile devices than they do on the web. So that's a, a, a whopping, you know, four plus hours a day on, on mobile. Um, globally, mobile traffic is is accounting for over sixty percent of all online traffic, which is is really wild. And those those numbers keep growing. And then you know, for anyone saying, oh well, you know, what about mobile web versus apps? Well, so, you know, eighty eight percent of that mobile time is spent in in native apps. So that is that is really where people live and breathe. I know I do. You know, Matt, I'm sure you do, and <laughs> most other people do as well. The problem here, though, is that mobile really is still kind of a, a black box, especially when it is compared to sort of websites and web apps, right? You know, user complaints can come in from all over, whether that's an app store review or a support ticket, even like social media. That's one of the worst ones because it's so visible. Um, and you spend a lot of time just kind of guessing what the problem was. You know, maybe you have some super basic analytics that tell you about events or about errors but you know you're trying to scrambling to put the pieces together and you know you maybe you identify an error and then you say oh well you know how widespread was the problem right was this um something that just impacted one person or is it something that's happening to you know 50 percent of our users so really a lot of questions to answer and I, I think sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming to even figure out where to start um and so we do have a few suggestions uh on where you can do that today right you don't have to tackle them all at once uh, and I think really just being able to answer even one of these regularly and, and with a lot of confidence goes a long way towards ensuring you have great digital experiences. So, uh, Matt, with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and we can talk about a couple of places to get started. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, a lot of times when people ask me where to get started with, with app analytics, there's sort of two sides of the coin. There's one, which is you want to track how many active users you have, what features are they using? more the engagement side. But today we're gonna to focus more on the negatives. So why are people leaving you bad reviews on uh, the App Store? How do I drive my App Store reviews higher? Um, what are the issues that people are experiencing um, using the product? So um, you may get negative reviews, but that's maybe 1% of the users who are actually having a problem. Meanwhile, there's 99% who are just suffering in silence. So we hear, if you go to the next slide, John, a lot of people say, what are the biggest issues impacting people? Who are the sort of silent folks who are not reporting problems that, that I'd like to know about? And um, that also will help drive, drive up your app store reviews. Explicit issues are one problem, but as we know, there's so many different types of mobile devices, different network conditions. There's like hundreds of Android phones and, and um, and places and geographies that people are using this. So another big problem I hear is, are users having performance issues using my product? Are they um, are they seeing what they should? Um, John, you can go to the next slide. Um, are there uh, issues with the app start time? Is it loading slowly? How's the network throughput? 
Um, are people seeing what they want to in a timely manner? Is the app crashing for certain devices and certain operating systems? And um, I know one of the most frustrating things in using app is just when it's slow and janky and you're trying to like buy a plane ticket and it just takes you forever. So are there frozen frames or, or places where the app is feeling feeling very laggy? Um, so these are all questions that, as John said, it's a black box and getting insight into these is really challenging. And then finally, um, many of us are focused on driving conversions and driving people to adopt and use parts of our products. Um, so probably the number one I hear is we're working on improving our onboarding flow in the mobile app. But a lot of times it's guess and check. It's trying to figure out where people might be getting stuck. Um, a lot of people are wondering, like, why aren't users completing the flows? Where are they getting stuck? Are there issues? Are they just confused? And um, getting insight into that is more and more of a problem as more of your customers move move to mobile. So hopefully those problems resonate, and I'm going to um, dive into log record of how we help address them. And um, obviously this you know is a, hopefully helpful to see how log it solves them, but I think maybe gives you ideas to approaches you can take with or without log rocket for, for solving these types of issues. So I'll share my screen. Um, awesome. So really quickly, just wanted to show with log rocket, we're an SDK that you add into your application. So we have SDKs for native Android, iOS, as well as React Native and Expo. Um, so really simple, you just add a couple of lines of code in our, our SDK and C app. And then I want to start with that first use case um, that we talked about of getting negative reviews. So let's say someone like a, a Jeff Probst leaves a negative review on your, on your app. You can go search for that user, pull up their session, and we recreate a pixel perfect video of their experience on the site. So you can see they're scrolling the swipe movement, what they're seeing. And we're not capturing actual video, we're just capturing the structure of the um, view controllers and the views, and then recreating what appears to be a video. So it's very performance. And so we see here, this user, I'll just go and play that back just so we can see again, maybe at 0.5 speed. This user is trying to add this, uh, this nice shirt to their cart and running into an error obviously super frustrating experience. And so we can then go under the hood and see what happened. Was there a technical issue? Was there an error? And in this case, there was this 500 request that was failing. And so we can go drill in. We can also link to your backend APM tool and see what was the error on the backends that led to this 500. So great way to be able to dig into those negative reviews, negative support cases and solve issues that might be affecting your, your customers. Um, that's great if you know what's wrong, but what we've seen is maybe 1%, maybe 5% of your customers will actually report issues. So how do you find and surface the biggest issues affecting your customers? And so what we do is we um, analyze, let me, um, here. We analyze all the data in the application and we surface the top issues that are affecting customers. So in this case, we see this promo code failure error that's affecting 2.3 thousand sessions. And we can click into each of these errors and understand more about what happens. So watch the session. We can see um, how many users were affected. We can see on what operating system and devices. And this works for both error states. We also capture rage clicks and network errors. So you can find the top problems affecting your customers. Um, this is great for explicit errors, but as, as we talked about, a lot of problems may be performance related. It could be slow devices or um, um, people on bad network connections. And so with LogRocket, we also allow you to see um, and answer questions like, what's the 90th percentile of how quickly the app is starting? And this is a great way to see, are there people getting 
it takes 20, 30 seconds for the app to load and we should address those? Or is our app actually starting quickly? And for those who are not familiar, there's um, different ways that apps can start. So cold start means the app has not been loaded for a long time. So that's someone say installing the app from scratch from the app store. Um, so that's you know obviously a really important user that you want to have a good experience. And then warm and hot start mean there's some amount where the app has loaded, maybe they're reopening the app. And so it's good to have benchmarks against each of these different types of application start time. You can also track things like crashes, rage clicks, um, how much bandwidth or memory your app is using. So really useful metrics to get a baseline and see alert when you may have regressions. Um, and final area is uh, we talked about optimizing uh, flows and uh, conversion paths. So here you can see we constructed this funnel that shows people who went from viewing an item to checking out in the cart. This may also be a sign up uh, conversion funnel where you're asking users for information to create an account. And we can use this and see how are people converting, where are they falling off? And unlike with typical analytics tools where you know, we see the 69% conversion and you're wondering why is that? With LogRock, we can go click in, we can view example sessions of people who fell out of that path. But then we also can surface any errors or, or issues that are affecting that conversion. So in this case, there's this dead click on checkout that's having an 18% impact on our conversions. Um, so showed a lot there, um, but different paths between searching for specific sessions, using issues to surface the top problems, and then using the LogRocket performance dashboard to find and, and track performance across the application. Awesome. Great, thanks, Matt. Um, that was that was really great. Nice to kind of see that stuff in action. Um, so yeah, on to, on to the Q&A, just as a reminder, uh, one, we will be recording this and sending, or we are recording this, and we'll be sending out the recording afterwards. Uh, and if you do have questions, uh, please drop them into the uh, Q and A uh, chat at the bottom uh, of your your Zoom window there. Um, so Matt, I think to get us started here, um, this is maybe like a almost a mobile 2.0 question, but um, there's a lot going on around omni-channel and customers sort of bouncing from uh, web to mobile and and then back again. Do you have any any thoughts or recommendations you could share around um, kind of keeping track of that? Yeah, so um, with LogRocket, we do track users across from web to mobile. Um, so you can build funnels that look at the conversion from each of those steps. Um, what's obviously really challenging, if not impossible, is that you may have users browsing on your website anonymously and then opening a mobile app. And so in those cases, um, there's not much you can do to track those. So that's an area you just kind of have to presume that people browsing are likely maybe opening the mobile app or that's where they're coming from. Uh, question around app store approvals, obviously native apps kind of have to, you know, go through and get approved by their Apple or Google. Um, anything with log rocket that might hurt that or hamper that or, or slow down that process? Yeah, good, good question. So uh, I'd say two things. So one log rocket doesn't capture any screenshots or video of the app we're just capturing the structure of the UI. And so um, that's um, permitted through the uh, app store reviews. And then secondly, we always recommend putting in your terms of service mentions of LogRocket and the kind of data you're capturing, just as you would with any analytics tool. And so between those two things, um, those, should, those should cover your needs. Um, but obviously important to check with your own privacy and legal teams to make sure um, that you're able to capture and do what you'd like to. Great. Um, this is almost a similar vein here, but uh, question around performance impact of of Log Rocket on on native apps. Um, yes. So we've done a lot of work to minimize the performance impact as much as possible, and so we're um, 
again, not capturing any screenshots or video. We're making sure to capture the minimal amount of information possible. And then we also throttle the amount of information we capture if we're exceeding a, a certain memory or CPU usage in the application. Awesome. Um, let's see, this is a React native question coming from a, a customer. Um, let's see, they are not always seeing um, all elements rendered on React native. Um, any recommendations there or um, or advice for getting that to show up? Yep, um, definitely. Uh, you can reach out to us in the, the using the little intercom bubble on the bottom right, the chat bubble there, and let us know. Um, there are certain elements that are challenging to capture on mobile, so they may not be appearing. So we would just have to look at those specific elements and see if those are possible to capture. Um, but in general, um, because we focus on performance, um, there may be some elements that don't look 100% right on mobile, um, uh, just because we, we're making sure not to affect the performance of the application. Got it. Uh, and then this is another sort of performance related one, but uh, a lot of times you can have sort of offline users on native apps. Um, can we tackle that with LogRocket? Yeah, great question. So. With log, if a user goes offline using your app, LogRocket will save this information to disk up to, um, I think maybe it's like uh, a few minutes so that when they come back online, we then upload that information. So that's a great way to, to make sure users, if they're going to a tunnel, they're still having a good experience using your product. Great. Uh, okay, this one is asking, how do you differentiate between mobile web and native mobile app data, and which do you think is most important for a company to either have or prioritize the user experience for? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I'd say it depends a lot on the uh, product and the way your customers want to use your, your products. Um, in general, I'd probably start at looking at the traffic of each and prioritizing based off the traffic. Um, that being said, we see a lot that mobile app users spend more or have higher engagement than mobile web users. And so that may lead, lead you to spend more time improving the mobile app experience instead of the mobile web. Yeah, I mean, I think if we make a call back right to the beginning of, of the presentation here, we saw 88% of, of time on mobile devices is spent on native apps. So, um, you know, definitely that's where the bulk of, of users' time is being spent. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, that looks like the end of the questions we've gotten here. Um, so I think we can probably uh, start wrapping up here. Uh, Matt, thank you for the demo and, and for your time here. Uh, everyone on the line, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as I said, we'll be sending out the recording uh, probably within the next 24 hours or so. Uh, and if you have other questions, you feel free to reach out to us if you're a customer already on, on Intercom or uh, support at logrocket.com. Uh, we're happy to assist you and, and help you with any, any questions that you have there. Thank you, everyone. Bye.